There is no one to deride me But you got to have friends The feelings are so strong You got to have friends Welcome to In The Loop with Laura and this is our friends segment. I wanted to introduce Betty Thousand to you. Many of you might already know her because she has been a lifelong resident of Rochester. She came last Thursday to my knit group. Previously she had called and she said, my name is Betty Thousand. I'm 92 years old. I've been knitting for 67 years and can you teach me how to do a different cast on? And I said, Betty, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Please come to the library group and it was a pleasure to meet her. I wanted to share her with you because she has a lot of wisdom not only about knitting but also about just Rochester memories. So thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you for asking me. One of the things I, I said to you when we met on Thursday was I've had a number of friends in town who have said they remember when Rochester had Cloth, clothing, or cloth stores and yarn stores. Oh, yeah. How many yarn stores or cloth stores do you remember that have been in Rochester? I don't know. I had bought a lot of mine from the dime store, Schultz, up okay. on the corner where the clinic is now. Okay. And, and they had free uh, directions, and I picked okay. up some there, too. Uh, this was one of them. This was a free direction. So this is the sweater that Betty was wearing on Thursday. It's a beautiful little cardigan. She's simplified it. It's a flyaway. And it's got a very interesting texture where it looks like you've knitted one row in a smaller needle. And then, no? No. It? You knit the row where you purl. Okay. But the knit row, you wrap it twice. Twice. And then, and then the next row, you drop it. Okay. So it's double the si double the length of the thread in one row. It's called quick knit sweater. Quick knit sweater. And Betty, could you tell people how many of these you have made? Well, between almost 600. Almost 600 of these. That's just mind-boggling to me as a youngster. But they're fairly warm. You're surprised at uh -huh. how warm they are. Yeah, the even and though it doesn't it, take much yarn. Okay, how much yarn? Uh, the pattern said eight inches, but I like or eight ounces. But uh, I um, like to make them a little bit longer, so you get a little maybe, bit more. Maybe ten ounces or something. Yeah. And that is. And if you if about, it's a bigger person yes. than me, then you use a bigger needle, uh -huh. and you get a bigger size. Okay. Sweater. And that, so is the sweater had one size in it, and then you vary the size according right. to the needle. Yeah. Well, sure. it's very, very clever, and I'd like you all to take a, just a closer look so you can see what I was talking about for the, um. But I ordered with the pattern. The pattern called for you to start uh -huh. at the top and go down, and I changed it. Then you had to go back and put on your neck, so I changed it and started up here. And then when you got to the main sweater part, you increased what you needed. Yep. For a knitter. So instead of going back and applying the and collar later. And having a little ridge in there where you join. Mm-hmm. She has mine, improved mine's it. Mine's dirty. <laughs> Happy knitted. Because I wear. Yeah, because you wear it, and that's what every knitter wants to have happen. And she has her own special tag here, perhaps a gift. And it come with buttons on it, the pattern says. Uh -huh. But you can just forget the buttons because it's hard to get the buttons. In fact, when I was first making and needing buttons, I had to write to the button place to uh -huh. get the buttons because so, stores didn't carry them. Wow. So... So you need to tell us some more stories, please, about um, how you learned to knit. It was un unusual. A lot of people say their mother taught them, but that wasn't the case for you. No, my mother crocheted, and she did not knit. And we were on a trip to Canada, my husband and my family and I, and uh, we met this couple, and she was a... In English girl, and she had married a Canadian soldier, 
This was after the war, after World War II. And uh, she said, well, I'll teach you. But I'll only teach you. I don't want anybody else in I the was room. I was going to say, that was there an unusual thing? She didn't uh, want anyone else in the room. No. Was she nervous? But, but she would knit, and she'd say, oh, I'm making for my some of my family back in England. Hmm. And she'd hold it up to her, and she'd say, well, they're about that size, and then she'd go on. So she she was versatile. She could really... She didn't have a pattern. And no, she just she made just it up did as she it. went. It's very impressive. Yeah. yeah. And so she took you one on one in a room and taught you. Yeah. How to knit and you to get started. Well. And then I bought books and helped. She started a wildfire. Yeah. This, I think this is my teacher. <laughs> I did teach her that other cast on. Have you been practicing? I'm I'm trying. Okay. I'm going, I need a refresher course <laughs> on it. Anytime, Betty. Because. <laughs> I, like I tell everybody, oh, I forget. I slept in the meantime. <laughs> so that, that's my problem. I, I don't remember exactly. So, Well, I'm, I'm with you there. Now, I want to show some of these things, too. These are some of your simpler projects. Um, many of you have seen something like this. Maybe at, uh, I know Grace Methodist has a bazaar sale, and people will make these and sell them. This is a wonderful soft cotton. And she has, this is the original pattern, was a larger one with eight sections. I call them panels. Panels. Yeah. And like yeah. any good knitter. This, this much is, is uh -huh. the design. It's a little wedge. And you repeat that over and over again. Yeah. And you end up with this. And it's, it's meant to be a pot scrubber, but you it's also use them. It's called a round dish coil. Okay. Is the way the pattern says. Uh-huh. So. But... You can also use them to grab things out of the oven and, and that kind of thing. So like every good knitter, she's improved on it. And you made this and I, one. I don't do as much panels. I call these each little section. Mm -hmm. And this this is a dishcloth for me because my hand's smaller. Made to order. I think that you have probably beat out that English woman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, especially when you tell people how many of these have you made and, and what were they used for? About 600. About 600, she says, just like I that. just had a project last year where I had to make 400. Okay. So I'm sure I've made more than that. That's very impressive. What, what was it used for, for 400 of these? Well, I don't know. They were <laughs> gifts. They were gifts. <laughs> My one daughter needed them for her gifts. That's a lot of gifts. She needed 400. You're a very good mother. Well, You're she belonged to a group that, uh -huh. that uh, she was president of, and oh. she just needed to. That's very sweet of you. These are lovely. Well, she bought the yarn. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I just done the work. That's a lot of work. A lot of work for 400. And this is another one. I know some of you have seen a crocheted version of a dish scrubby. This is my first knit one I've seen. Heloise. A Heloise hint. So um, Betty was telling me about this right before the show, that it's 15 stitches. It's done in garter stitch. So you knit every row for 24 rows or 12 ridges. For that size. For this size. Again, you can make it any size you want. This is one that works well for her hand. And this is made out of one of the coarse... What's it called? Nylon netting. Nylon netting. You can get this at Walmart. No, the other the, is for veiling. Yeah, a really thin, the really small holes is for veils. It's too soft. This is the bigger toll that would be underneath skirts. Makes a scratcher. Right. So one 72-inch long strip will create one, one of these. Yeah, with okay. no breaks in it. Right, and mm. that's, that's nice, as every knitter knows. You don't have to sew in ends. If you only on. buy a few yards and, and have to do it. Heloise said to uh, tie it. Well, I used a sewing machine and sewed them, and that made it better. Yeah, it's a Not as good bulky. Hint. Right, to take the two ends and overlap them and just one or two sews, and it's not going to come apart, but it's not as bulky as a yeah. knot. Yeah, and, let's and take this a can look be washed in a dishwasher mm -hmm. with the clothes. Oh, it can be washed with the clothes. How clever. Oh, yeah. You can use it, wash it. And it's 
it scratches but doesn't leave a mark. Right, because it's nylon, it's not going to go through your um, right your dishes that have the. That's what's good about it for your Teflon right. or anything that you don't or good silver, good yep. dishes or good whatever. Good silver and um, or enamel coating too. It's yeah. got an enamel coating. Now a lot of people crochet them. Yes. And make them in rounds, which is nice and pretty. Where this is functional. It's functional. <laughs> um, it's not as thick. I would sometimes with my crocheted ones, I've gotten some food caught on the inside because it's like a ball. Oh, yeah. So this one, like she said, you can just stick it in your dishwasher along with your silverware, and it will get hot enough to be disinfected oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and cleaned with a soap, or you can wash it through with your rags. And here are the close-ups of the, the two. This is the, this is as written for the pattern, and this one is I, I call this a dishcloth and this a, a mat. A mat, because this is big enough. You could, like, you mentioned putting plants on them. Yeah, I put or yep. pictures or uh -huh. just use it. It's just kind of like a thick it, doily. Because it's thicker right. than what your... Uh, Our doilies, and we're going to pull up. This is what some the doilies of her, are. These are some of her everyday uh, items that she has knit and knit and knit and knit. I want to pull up, um, well, first of all, can we look at the sweater you're wearing? Sure. Is this uh, the same pattern you did for the yellow, and you just did some a different no, no, pattern? This no, no, no. This is a different one. This is not that. This is, this a, is a thicker yarn. It's obviously yeah, not the same yeah. pattern, and it has a really beautiful diamond lace. Very pretty. We have out now an afghan that Betty has also knitted. She's very versatile. She's done scrubbies and sweaters and lace, as you're about to see. This is a lace type afghan because it uses a pattern with holes and it's called bear claw. Bear claw. And you said you've knitted this in this tan, which is a good one for bear claw. And also well, but there's in a, also white bears, a, pol polar bears. And so that's what your white I one is. I made one in white. So. <laughs> Was this difficult to do? I gave it to a dear friend. Oh. I didn't have it. So. And you knit this on one circular needle? and just yeah. knit one panel yeah. instead yeah, of sewing things forth, together. Right. It's beautiful. It keeps the work in front of you then instead of stretched out. Mm -hmm. And here you can see, um, I imagine is there, you're increasing in the purl row? Yeah. And then you? Decrease. Decrease here? Yeah. Oh, yarn over. Uh-huh. And that makes that beautiful pattern all the way across. And then she's got a ribbing on the side. But she has also brought these beautiful doilies that she has made. Isn't the that other way gorgeous? for the, uh, no. To see the peacock. Oh, well, the camera's facing the other way. It, oh. Yep, yeah, it's facing towards okay. us. So, isn't that gorgeous? I often see um, crochet doilies are the most common thing I see. When I see a knitted doily, it's unusual to have a center like this. This To have this, it was not knit um, circular in the round. Here, I'll go with this one first. This is a little more typical, but it's also gorgeous work. This is a crocheted doily. You start in the middle. You start in the center, then you put it on double pointed needles. To start, you have to. To come out, and then when it gets so many stitches on, you can switch to a circular needle and you keep it going. It keeps your work more in front of you. You can see all the way to the edge. And then you did a crocheted bind off, yes? Yeah. So you do crochet. Your mom did teach you to oh, crochet. Yeah. Do you crochet much? No, no. No, I prefer knitting. Uh huh. Well, it's a very good use of crochet to have the crocheted bind off. And that's similar to when Anna Packer was on, we talked about crocheted bind off. But this is a bit more of a typical knitted doily because it goes from the center out and you're using increases with your yarn overs and decreases in the center and um, beautiful flowers, beautiful shape. It's a gorgeous doily and she's starched it so it's nice and stiff. And put it on a stretcher. Put it on a stretcher. And There's so little, yeah I have a board that I use aluminum nails uh -huh. and the stretches it. And so in each of these points, so there'll, be, there'll be an aluminum yeah. nail, and it holds it out taut, so you get this beautiful shape. 
But this one, you knit casting on here, correct? Yeah. But you have the crocheted edging. So did you yeah. cast on and then you later picked up? Yeah. Did you cast on provisional cast on? I don't remember. <laughs> okay. It's been a while. But even on the edges here, this Well, like I told you earlier, I've slept. You've slept. So. Well, you're, you're, I'm glad you did. I'd be worried about you <laughs> if you didn't. And here, these, these look like tulips to me. I don't know if that's the intended mm -hmm. tension. And you've got a beautiful lace pattern. And then this is, although it's plain, it forms... That's been stored away and it's mm, dirty. It forms the perfect border for this quite grand peacock. Very showy. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And to do this, so somebody was very clever in designing the yeah. yarn overs, yeah. knitting together, and then somehow to do all of that. Do you remember how long ago it was you made this? Oh, I've, I've put it in a book. And I've got a picture of it, and I've got the design, mm -hmm. and the pattern is all there. I've got a loose book full. It, it tells you that, when you did uh, it. That's got it. I can go back and get it. And what size needles, how much thread was needed, and so forth. That's very impressive. Well, well, and good for you for keeping. In case anybody wants it later. And I, I would like for our knitters to keep that in mind. Um, there are online places that help you to keep digital photo books. I use Ravelry.com, but it's the same thing where you keep track of what you've knit, what yarn you used, what needles you used, yeah. and it helps you if you want to care for that item later to know well, what it was you, made out you of. Forget. And then you get to sleep. That's what we're learning. You get to sleep Yeah. because you wrote it down. Yeah. We've got just a few more items. Um, I'm, I'll do this one is one that Betty made and designed herself. It's a sweet little hat with a straight brim. It's and dirty. I took it out of the wash. You know what? This just means that you're loving and using all the things that you've made. So it's a sweet little but moss stitch. But I started out on a round. Okay, in a circular. And then went down to the double pointed. Yep, on the end. At the end. And a decrease that made a swirl and pulled it all together. It looks wonderful. And it's a soft knit. I've got a white one in it too. Uh -huh. And then we've got, um, I'm going to pull this out next and then we'll go to uh, some little stockings. These are sweet little pins you can wear or you could even put a different backing on it and you could hang it on your tree. If you don't have time to go for ribbon, Use yarn. Use yarn. I've got a lot of that. Yep. And then tie a jingle bell on there. It's a sweet thing to wear at the holiday season. I really like those. You can put it on your gifts, too. Uh-huh. Your packages. Absolutely. And you've got the silver bells and the gold bells. One of our trips to uh, Australia, uh, I gave to the lady there. And her kids are learning to knit, hmm. and she belongs to some organization that they like, similar to our churches, and that's what they're making for gifts for Christmas. So, when were you in Australia? Uh, 1980 and 86. And what made twice. that's amazing? That's a long trip to plan for. And what made you? Well, my husband go there? was in construction. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went there to see how they done. Hmm. And in A, we toured um, the Murray Project. That was the Murray River. Okay. That was uh, in uh, the uh, near south of Sydney and in that area, Canberra, the capital and all of that. Uh huh. And then uh, the next time we went, we were out in the middle. Of oh, you went to the center, to the outback. Yeah. Ayers Rock and huh. Alice Springs in that area. Was that one more for vacation, or were you learning no. about construction oh, no, as no. well? No, we were, both times were uh, promoting mm. conservation, land conservation, finding what they were doing, hmm. and telling us 
what we were. We learned from them, and and they taught us. Yeah. Um, you told me a little bit on Thursday about how um, you got married so late at 24. Yeah. Because your husband had been fighting in World War II. Well, yeah, he was with Patton, and they took the surrender of uh, the Germans. Okay. He met his group met the uh, Russians in Czechoslovakia. That's where they met. That's amazing. He was in uh, the European front. And then your brother was in the Pacific. Yeah, he was correct? in Guadalcanal. He went with the bunch that uh, were the first ones in with uh, any equipment after the Marines took Guadalcanal. I can't imagine then, the things he saw. Then he was on the ship and they put into the Philippines and that's when the atomic bombs were uh, exploded and they waited until it was clear enough and then they went in he went in for occupation and was only there a short time and then was brought back that, so but he had been in uh, Guadalcanal from 43 mm. January of 43 he was in Guadalcanal and then if he went into the occupation he came back to Rochester and oh yeah I went into business with my dad and, and my husband went into business with him. And Betty lives just south of town in um, Green Oak. Yeah. In Green Oak. And her father had the business next door, and he dug ditches. Yeah. With big, different machinery. She's oh, yeah. talking about the variety of We had of trenchers, machinery. we had cranes, we had uh, whatever you needed to dig. There's other people doing it now. Different We're, machines, course, yeah. but that's fascinating just to hear about yeah. modern history. When the boys got out of service when mm -hmm. they went in with my dad. There was three of them working. My dad had the bigger trencher mm -hmm. and my husband done the smaller and my brother done the open work with cranes. Mm. So. And how many years did they do that? You said your dad sold the business? Well, my husband was in it uh, 51 years. Wow. He worked uh, even past when you say retirement, but mm -hmm. um, my brother had to give up because he was hurt in Guadalcanal. Mm. So he was 100% disabled eventually. Mm. They didn't know at the time, but um, we had to get him service connected because they didn't keep records even. <laughs> didn't they, keep well, that was, the war was going on, well. and they just didn't. There always seems to be paper he, pushing, but... But he, my brother just died in May. Oh, that was that brother. I'm mm -hmm. sorry to hear that. My husband died four years ago, mm. so... Both living long, and you're so, holding down the thousands. So I'm for, just hanging out there by myself. <laughs> you said a daughter lives near you? Or I've next got door? three daughters and a son. Mm -hmm. And they all... My son lives right beside of me. Mm-hmm. And uh, the three daughters live here in town. That's wonderful. Or around town, the edge. Yep. So, and they and keep they, you busy with They look with after me and tell me where to jump. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not too different and from that's, us. Then. That's good. I'm, I'm fortunate. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And you've got some other sweet things that you've made for little ones. Do you do those directions I got for those from a lady in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. She was a nurse at the baby department at the hospital. Are these the sweetest she gave me that. things. And these are good because they don't kick, they don't, babies kick them off. Yeah, and when and you put on these socks. These stay on yep. better. They've got here, you can see a tie, and it ends in the. Um, Pom pom. Oh, it's a nice big tie. And so you can put them on and you can snug them up a little bit. And then these, this garter also sort of holds on. You can make them all. I've given away so many, I don't have any uh, all one color. Oh, you can make them out of one oh, color. Yeah, you can oh, make yeah, them striped. Just one color. They don't have to be two colors. That's adorable with the two colors. And this one, Betty had just. A wee bit of angora, and that's what this fuzzy part is. A little bit of angora, and I thought, what a perfect touch. I have seen some booties knit entirely out of angora. You can't ever see the stitches, 
because it's so fluffy. Right. It just looks like marshmallows. And sometimes um, it can get in your, your eyes or something. But a little teeny bit like this but, is but just a little... But that's good for a cold weather yep. child, too. Yeah, very or warm. this is more... Yep, Angora is uh, the hair of an Angora rabbit. Right. That's where it comes from. Yeah. And it's a short staple. I just had a little piece left, so I... Perfect use for it. Put it there. And then the rest of this, she was saying, is made out of a nylon, so yeah. it's very washable. That's always important to think about when you give a baby present. Um, when, when we get nylon here, and when I was in uh, Australia in the 80s there, uh, they had it. So I came back with a supply. <laughs> Are you still using that? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! I know. Well, what, I know what kind of I bought both times that we were there. <laughs> Had a special store I went to. I'll yeah. bet, and they bet they remembered you from the previous time. No, they, <laughs> different people. And then the one last thing that we have to show of Betty's is a similarly made bed sock for an adult. And I say similarly made because it's knit flat, and then just like these baby booties, it might be a little difficult to see. Yeah, there's a there's seam some. down the center, and then it comes up the back. Yeah, I have the patterns for those. I've given a lot of those away, too. It's almost, you, you almost can't even see the seam when you're matching up that pink and that white. Yeah, yeah. Here, um, it's the same where you knit yeah. it flat, you shape it, so that it comes up for a foot. And this red is very bright. I don't know if you will be able to see it And it stays on because you have a butt and arm. And so she's done decreasing all along here. And then you sew it up the back. And as she said, there's you did buy a button. So it opens up more to get your foot in. And it closes. And then it's a, a bed sock. It's going to be slippery in the on wood floor. But you can wear it in bed and... They're not too bad the slippers, on the floor. Right. I know of some people who make slippers, they will take the puffy paint you can buy at Walmart yeah. and you can draw something on the bottom. Yeah. And it gives a little Keeps bit a of a grip. Traction. And then there's other places you can purchase a, a little patch of leather yeah. and sew it on if that's what you well, care to do. Well, there's some that are made where you make them. Oh, you off, pick, off you of pick the, up off yeah, of the leather? Yeah. Yeah, okay. but these you don't have to. Right. Well, this is nice because you can make it all at home with just the, the yarn that you have. It obviously doesn't take a lot to knit no. this. It takes even less to knit these, but these are knit on a much smaller needle. Oh, yeah. So, uh, but what? I made those so long ago, I don't remember the size, but mm -hmm. I've got the directions for everything. It's, it's bound to be about the, a sock needle size, which is usually a 2 millimeter or a U.S. One, I believe. I I'm, I'm apologize if I'm incorrect. Probably on a those. three, I think, but I'm not sure. It was three. Well, if you knit tight, it's just very small stitches. Just two lovely. Or, two or three. It's probably two. Two. Okay. Well, these are just gorgeous things that you've made. I'm so thankful that you came on. Do you have any advice that you would give someone who might be newly married and meet someone and just, they say? Just keep knitting. Just keep knitting? Because <laughs> it pays off eventually. Eventually. <laughs> it seems like it's been when a very... You, when you get your family <clears throat> raised and you don't have anything to do and you're sitting there by yourself, mm -hmm. your husband's out or gone, either way, mm -hmm. like... Something to keep your hands busy. And they're busy. a gift. Yep. They're beautiful You can use them. Gift. And people are appreciative of handmade things. They are. You've really if made beautiful things. Yeah. You've made beautiful things and they look great on you. I'm thankful to have met you. And oh. I'm glad that you were brave and came in here to talk with me. <laughs> you twisted my arm. <laughs> I, I did. I can't deny it. But She's a very nice lady to know and you should meet her. Well, I think that Betty is a, a treasure for our community, and I'm glad to introduce some of you to her, and I'm sure many of you already know her. But stop her and see if she's wearing anything hand-knit next time you see her. I'm in the phone book if I can help anybody, but I don't want to take her job. <laughs> she's very versatile. So thank you again for coming, Betty. I appreciate it.